As thousands of migrants cross into the United States each day, the, they make their way north. Border cities this weekend are in states of emergency as they deal with this new influx. Tonight, George Solis reports on those seeking a better life. Tonight, tales of pain and suffering along the U.S.-Mexico border. She said the journey was particularly hard for her seven-year-old daughter, who ended up with an infection. Migrants lining the streets of border towns like here in El Paso. It's where we meet Evelyn and Franklin, who made a perilous three-month journey to the U.S. from Peru. She says in Nicaragua, they were kidnapped and they were threatened. And still, that pales in comparison to the trauma she says she felt when she was separated from her four-year-old grandson at the border. No separado. They took the child and told us he would be remanded into state custody, he says, now left waiting to see if they'll be reunited. Since Title 42 was lifted on Thursday, border crossings have dramatically decreased, largely because of stricter migration policies by the Biden administration. Not only have we been planning, but we have been executing on those plans. Migrants must first secure appointments on an app before entering a port of entry. Those that cross illegally could be barred from seeking asylum for five years. As migrants are shipped north, a humanitarian crisis is brewing in sanctuary cities across the country. In New York, the historic Roosevelt Hotel in Midtown Manhattan is being transformed into an asylum seeker arrival center. We've reached a breaking point. We need help. In Chicago, warehouses are preparing to house migrants. And in Denver, this parking lot served as a makeshift shelter. Bells ringing and flowers being given out on the border today. A moment to celebrate the mothers. 22-year-old Yorlena Falcone gave birth to her son just 15 days ago. Which is at one point she thought she had lost her baby when she actually tripped on the journey. As this mother is left wondering why her 17-year-old son died in U.S. immigration custody earlier this week. Él iba sano, él iba bien. He was healthy and doing well, she says. Families in search of a better life, now caught in the middle of policy and politics.